All right. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for dialing in for tonight's IPO webinar. Um, here we have for Indus Infra Business Trust. We will be listed on main market on 25th of March. Prolinda Infra Business Trust is the first listed business trust in Malaysia, which is Sharia compliant with four income generating highway, which is Kajang Skill Highway, GCE, LKSA, and Atlet. Later, the management team will provide more detail on it. We are honored to have here the company CEO, Anche Malim Parvi Ahmad, Nanji Ahmad. Hi, Anche Malim. Hi. Hi. Good evening, and Paul. Good evening. And our general manager, highway operation, Anche Azim Bin Lee. Anche Azim. Hi. Hi, Azmi. Hi. And our manager finance, Anche Latif Ibrahim. Anche Latif. Everyone. Good evening. Hi. We also have our M investment, the principal advisor for the IPO with us. Let us to view for the corporate video before we run through the presentation. Imagine a network of vital arteries, seamlessly connecting people, places, and possibilities. This is the world of Project Lintasan Kota Holdings Sundurian Berhan, otherwise known as ProLintas, a leading urban highway operator in Klang Valley. Today, we manage a network of six strategic highways spanning across Klang Valley, the country's economic heartland. Through our subsidiaries, we design, construct, operate, and maintain essential expressways that are used by millions of road users annually. These highways, Ampang Kuala Lumpur Elevated Highway, or known as Atle, Guthrie Corridor Expressway, or known as GCE, Lebaraya Gamuning Shah Alam, or known as LKSA, System Penurian Traffic Kajang, or known as Silk, Sungai Besi Ulu Kalang Elevated Expressway, or known as Suka, and the Damansara Shah Alam Elevated Expressway, or known as Dash, need no further introduction, as Malaysians have come to depend on them daily. After two and a half decades, we're excited to announce that four of our six highways will be clustered into the first publicly listed business trust in Malaysia. Beyond the asphalt and concrete lies a unique and innovative structure, the ProLentas Infra Business Trust. Over 84 kilometers of combined distance, this business trust shall encompass our four primary matured highways, namely Atle, GCE, LKSA, and SIL. At the heart of this pivotal trust lies ProLentas Manager's Sundurian Berhad. It is led by a seasoned board of directors and a senior leadership team, collectively boasting over 30 years of extensive industry experience. This ensures improved accountability and effective management of the trust highway assets. As a leading urban highway operator, our highways are integral for the urban connectivity in the Klang Valley. In 2022, our four highways, Atle, GCE, LKSA, and Silk, saw a combined average annual daily traffic of 433,000. Atle, our nation's first intra-urban elevated highway, connects Ampang to the heart of Kuala Lumpur over a distance of 7.4 kilometers. Meanwhile, LKSA enhances the transportation infrastructure between the established townships of Shah Alam and Kota Kamuning, stretching 14.7 kilometers. GCE, our second longest highway in the trust, is an efficient transportation corridor of 25 kilometers, seamlessly interconnecting Shah Alam and Rawang. Finally, our longest highway, Silk, serves as the primary ring road for the town of Kajang, extending over 37 kilometers and offering access to key locations in the surrounding vicinity. Our highways stand as catalysts for economic growth and development in the Klang Valley, which is the nation's capital. Functioning as vital arteries, our highways intricately connect people and businesses, empowering and enriching communities through their enhanced connectivity. Being the first business trust in Malaysia, we're thrilled to introduce a concrete interpretation of the idiom, driving on a piece of your investment. The rising population growth of 1.2% per annum, coupled with increased car ownership due to rising income, contributes to traffic congestion, which underscores the robust foundation of our business. This foundation enables us to deliver substantial returns to our unit holders by leveraging the strategic locations of our highways and elevating lives through our enhanced connectivity. By investing in our trust, you gain access to a steady income stream along our highways with the visibility of our concessions. 
It's like owning a piece of a bustling city where daily activities translate into financial rewards for you. We aim to be Malaysia's leading urban highway concessionaire and continue supporting the country's nation-building efforts by developing infrastructure that serves the people. Thanks for the corporate, uh, corporate video. Uh, over to you, Ajay Malin. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Latif, in about the slide. So um, let me start with the presentation with our uh, corporate structure. Uh, Project Intasan Kota Holding, the uh, holding company for the uh, six highways that we have, is owned 47% uh, by PNB and 53% by Amanah Saham Bumutra. While, while we focus at the four, which is uh, Kajang Serp, Naksa, and Gatri and Akle, these are considered the, the ground fields which has been within the group uh, in number of years of between 20, between 17 to, to 25 years. The newly highway that we uh, included in the group is uh, Dash and Suka. As you know, that this was open uh, in terms of operations uh, last year. And uh, we also have a turnkey contractor called Turnpike Synergy, which uh, manages the uh, operation and maintenance of the current uh, Suka and Dash. Besides that, we also have uh, Pentas Highway Services. This is a commercial arm which runs the uh, event space uh, in, in the uh, highways that we have. The, also the rental of the rest area, also billboards. And uh, coming soon, they will also run petrol station and convenience store, uh, respectively, uh, in the next uh, one or two years. So the next slide we have is where we have a structure after the listing. Our prime focus is on, the, on your right, which uh, the formation of Prointas Infra BT uh, was last year and uh, consists of four mature highways, uh, highways which is Kajang Serp, Gatri, Laksa and uh, Serp Highway. And uh, it's actually managed by a trustee manager called Prointas Managers and Berhad, where the incorporation of the trustee manager was approved by the SC uh, last year. So in, in terms of our, our shareholding after the listing, uh, PLKH, we still own 51% being the promoter. And again, 49% uh, will be the offer for sale, where 25.9% is for um, uh, institutional and uh, selectors investors, which we have secured our, our cornerstone, uh, which are six cornerstones. Uh, Meeting investors we have secured. And, and today we are working on the securing of the public offering, which is about 4.2%. And 1.8% is actually the directors and employees of the group. Okay. <clears throat> so our next slide. Okay. So our board members are actually uh, Tato Ikmal Ijaz. He was previously the MD of Plus, uh, the second MD of Plus. Datu Muhammad Azran Abdullah is our current group CEO. He is now the independent, non-independent executive director. Uh, then we also have Datu Mutalib Alias. Uh, quite well known in the market, uh, director in Equinas in uh, Air Asia, and Datuk Syed Azmi, an engineer. We have Puan Nick Fazila, she was previously in uh, CCM as a CEO. Datin Nona, uh, Philip Capital uh, Chairman, and myself. Key management is uh, myself, uh, being the CEO, uh, in Cik Azmi Nin, uh, the General Manager for Highway Operations, and I also have uh, Cik Mukarisa on the uh, financial controller side. Very well experienced uh, in terms of, I think collectively, we have uh, experience close to probably 300 years in, in, in uh, managing uh, the, the trust at the moment with uh, respectable uh, directors and also key senior management. Okay, okay. we started this uh, exercise by, in, in, actually we started exercise in 2016 where we wanted to list the company with a normal route. But then uh, at, at that point of time, the government changed and they wanted to abolish stone. So we, we aborted our proper exercise at that point of time. And then uh, way back in 2018, we started to study the concept of a business trust, which I will go in detail what is a business trust. So in order to do a, a, a trust, we went back to the government and said, okay, let's uh, work in a scheme that we do not have to, to uh, you do not have to pay us uh, compensation and give us a longer concession period. And also uh, effectively, once the government agreed, we reduced our toll rate for Akleh by about 15%. And collectively, we reduced uh, the uh, toll rate for LKSA, Gatri, and Sub Highway by about 8%. So once that is done, we signed the effective uh, concession agreement, the new concession agreement uh, dated 12 October 2022. 
on the next slide, I will explain to you the effect on the concession agreement. Once this is signed, then we went to the SC and Bursa for consultation first to see whether uh, they, are, they are activating again their guideline, uh, which was uh, in 2016 on the business trust uh, listing. We got good response from, from the SC and we started the process of the IPO. Uh, collectively, we also went into a debt refinancing program with Bank Pembangunan and we managed to raise uh, 2.7 billion ringgit. Out of the 2.7 billion ringgit, 2.3 billion is to retire the current debt that we had in the four companies. The current debt interest rate was about 6.2%. And at the moment, uh, the rate is dropped to about 5.3%. And we do have a grace period of 10 years that we do not pay any principal. It's only servicing the portion of the profit because uh, this is an Islamic instrument. So the cash flow has been uh, prepared in such a way that the first 10 years, uh, because there is no toll hike, we will then have a lower repayment of uh, the debt with Bank Pembangunan. The 10th year, we will have a toll hike for Laksa, Gatri and so, right? And Akleh will not have any toll hikes. At the 12th year, then is where we start to repay our principal to Bank Pembangunan and it stretches uh, for a period, the whole loan for Bank Pembangunan stretches 24 years. So this is the first Islamic term loan uh, firstly, uh, the rates are cost of fund plus uh, lower spread for a period of 12 years. And the length uh, of the loan or the tenure of the loan is 24 years. So once we got the loan approved for Bank Mungunat, we went back to the government and said that, okay, we have fulfilled the, uh, the, the, the debt refinancing. And then we started our acquisition of the four highways, uh, which is the number four, column number four uh, implementation. And then we went back to the government and got an effective date for the concession agreement in the year 2024. So now we are working on the listing of Prontas Infrabiti, the first highway trust. I think even, even not, not in Malaysia, it's the first highway trust uh, in, in, in Asia, the way that we are looking at it. And we are targeted to be listed on 25th of March, 2024. Next. Okay. So background of our highway is like we have four highways uh, to be incorporated into the trust. Um, 100% urban. Uh, the, the first highway they had, we had was Akhle, and then we uh, acquired the uh, Gatri Corridor uh, in 2017 uh, in the morning, and we signed the concession agreement to construct LKSA in, in the evening. So these are all, all the highways that, that we have uh, in the network, and the last that we had, we acquired uh, Kajang Sub in the year 2017. So collectively, Prointas uh, uh, Holdings number high, constructs its own highways, and also acquires when they are good highways in the market. Okay, these are the uh, snapshot of the concession agreement. Kajang Sir, Gatri and LKSA has a concession period, a revised concession period of 38 years and six months. Thus, the new concession period ends in the year 2062 for three highways. These three highways have two toll heights. Uh, one is the year 2033, right? Yeah, correct. And 2033. 2033. And another toll height will be in the year 2043. Yep, Ten correct. Years. Yeah, correct. Hmm. And Akle, because it's a generation one highway, which we said the uh, first year, we started agreement in 1996. It will end naturally in the year 2037. Right? So, in terms of uh, average life of the highway that we have is collectively uh, between 13 years to 38 years. Okay, next. Okay, this is our, our timeline of how we started the business. We started way back in 1995. And in 1996, we signed the concession agreement for Akleh. We commenced operation for Akleh in 2001. Again, uh, the same day that we acquired Gatri Corridor, we also signed the concession agreement for LKSA which is in Sha'alam. Four years after that, we commenced operation in LKSA. Uh, five years after that, 2015, we completed a phase two uh, in uh, Akhle Highway that is from Jalatik to Jala Ampang. This is to cater for the uh, incoming traffic from uh, Suka uh, that we have already planned in, in advance. And in 2017, we acquired Silk from uh, Jasa Marine. Then uh, 2022, the signing of the new concession agreement for Akleh, Gatri, Laksa, and so, and also completing the toll researching exercise. 23, we established the infra BT 
and now we are working towards the listing by 25th March 2024. Okay, okay. So again, um, every company has its, has its purpose of strategic intent. Our intent is, uh, because we are a highway operator, we, we manage our highway in all uh, service aspects from the user. We improve quality. Uh, basically, we do have uh, rest areas that we have upgraded, mainly in Gatri. We do have event spaces and we are working towards getting a few petrol stations on, on, our, on our highways. We are aligned to ISO standards. And as uh, for, for this uh, um, SERP and also for Gatri, in the concession agreement, we have to construct two projects. The first uh, is a lane widening, uh, which is ongoing in SERP highway. And the second is an uh, interchange that we need to construct in uh, Gatri Corridor Expressway. I will go into detail later on these two projects. And of course, uh, we also embark on business growth. Our, our trend, as you can see, we construct, we, we acquired two highways. Uh, we have four, which we have uh, built on, on our own, which is Akle, uh, Laksa, and we also constructed Super and Dash. Of course, in every uh, company, we practice ESG and also innovation and technology. So the first highway that we are going to discuss in detail is actually the Silk Highway. Uh, Silk has four toll plaza, Tiok interchanges, and the main line of 37.2 uh, or 3 kilometers. And it serves the town of uh, Bangi, Kajang, and also the area of Sungai Long, Sungai Besi. And you also have uh, linking uh, to this highway, about six other highways links to, to this highway. So connectivity is good. Uh, linkage is from Sungai Besi Expressway. And we also have uh, SKVE on, on your left. And in the middle, we have Ceras Kajang. And uh, on your right uh, bottom, we have uh, actually the uh, uh, Highway. Uh, as, uh, Lekas Lekas highway. Lekas Lekas highway. Lekas highway. Connecting to the, the Silk Highway. So in terms of traffic volume, this is the highest traffic volume contributor. And also in terms of revenue, this is the highest. Uh, in the year 2020, uh, we had so we acquired this highway in 2017. Uh, the traffic was 189,000 traffic per day. And in 2020, uh, because of COVID, we dropped to, to a level that uh, we got 148. And we were, we were grateful there were a few MCOs and, and uh, that allows us to have the traffic grow at that point of time. 2020, 2022, uh, we bounced back at 196 uh, million, uh, thousand traffic per day. And now we are doing about... Uh, 208,000 as per audited accounts 2023. So you can see the, the growth part uh, is about 5.9% from 2022 to 2023. And, and this highway uh, is going to be, uh, in terms of traffic growth, we are projecting a KEGA about 2.6% from 2022 up to 2062, where in the past, we have also seen higher growth uh, in respect of traffic uh, in South Highway. Next slide. Okay, again, the, the, uh, in terms of uh, classification, 94% are, are class 1, which are motor vehicles. Uh, the rest are class 2, 3, and 4. Uh, three, 2 and 3 are uh, lorries, actually, and taxis are very small, 0 0.4, and buses, 0 0.3. Okay, okay. Uh, next highway we have is the Gatri Corridor Expressway, 3 to Plaza, uh, 7 interchanges, and has a main line of 25 kilometers. It, it starts from Bukit Jelutong all the way in Shah Alam and it ends in uh, Plus Highway near, near Rawang. Here, here is quite interesting because uh, there are many more development of townships coming up, uh, mainly in from, from Elmina West and Elmina East all the way up to Lagong area is owned by Sam Dhabi property. So this highway history was uh, during the time of Tan Sri Khalid, there was a CDG drive exercise where the highway was actually sold to us and, and the plantation at that point of time was sold to Sam Dhabi property. Collectively, there is a 10,000 acre uh, future development coming up between Elmina North and, sorry, Elmina East and West and all the way up to Lagong Mas. Then uh, collect, uh, also within Lagong Mas and Kota Elmina, there will be a new business park to be developed where we will tap the traffic via the Strat Kelly interchange uh, which is now under a tender process that we will construct in the next four years. Once the traffic, uh, once the park has been developed, then we can see more commercial vehicles coming into Gatri, plowing their way all the way to Shah Alam and also to Port Klang. Other points of development we, we, we can see, spurs of uh, traffic coming in, is Gamuda Gardens, 
uh, Eco Grandio, uh, Denai Alam area, and also in terms of uh, Eco Business Park, uh, where there will be further connectivity in terms of local road into into Gatri. Uh, in terms of uh, connectivity, on your right, okay, on your right, you have the Plus Highway, right. Uh, in the middle, you also have a Dash Expressway, which also belongs to to our group, and uh, you also have Elite on on your left. And again, NKVE crossing uh, uh, below uh, Dash Highway from uh, Daladuta to, to Shalam. Uh, in terms of traffic growth, next slide. Uh, previously, we were doing about 106,000 vehicles. Then it popped up to 2019-112. COVID, everybody was affected. Today, 2023, we are doing 132.5 thousand vehicles, uh, sorry, traffic a day. So collectively, yeah. there's a growth of 4.1 percent compared to 2022. Uh, Kega, in terms of our future growth, we are expecting about 3.1 percent from 2022 up to 2062. <coughs> okay, next. Here, here we are looking at 90.7 percent cars. The rest of it is heavy vehicles. We are quite happy with Gatri because heavy vehicles pay three times more in terms of toll. Uh, but I think Cik Azmi has to work harder to maintain the roads because when lorry comes in, uh, we do have additional repairs that we need to do on the pavement. Correct. Okay. Next. Highway. Okay. Okay, the last. Uh, this is the highway that we constructed from Kota Kumuning, uh, if you're aware, in Kasas, all the way to uh, Shah Alam uh, town. During the time of construction, we, we wanted to ease the traffic at this point, uh, these, these two points, because if you do not have a highway at that point of time, there will be 14 traffic lights that you need to cross and will take you it's easily 45 minutes to get from Kota Kumuning to, to Sha'alam. With this highway, it reduces the time and now you can get within the two uh, area within the period of 15 minutes. Two toll plaza here. One is on the main line, uh, which is uh, called Seri Muda toll plaza. And another one is uh, Alam Impian toll plaza. The history of this uh, highway is that during that point of time, IMP was the owner of the land that now Latif is showing you, which is about 1,200 acres. So collectively, IMP is also part of PNB and we are also part of PNB and we collaborated and said, okay, let's build a highway. Firstly, for the traffic from Komuning to Sha'alam. Secondly, for the development in uh, in Alam Impian. Four years back, IMP was sold to uh, Satya and, and now this property is managed by SP Satya. It has uh, 1,235 acres to develop. Today, the development is only about 45%, mainly uh, residential. When we have, met, we have met SP Satya about three weeks back and they do have a master plan to develop commercial and, and they've done a few and uh, also a few more pockets are coming up in terms of residential. Collectively, once uh, SP Satya is fully developed, the population will range between 80,000 to 100,000 people within this uh, Satya uh, area itself. Uh, this is a future catalyst for us because uh, any vehicle that wants to go through Alam Impian must pay toll in and out to us. Uh, of course, the toll rates are slightly cheap, but uh, in terms of long term, uh, this is where we can also see growth coming in into the group. So in terms of traffic, uh, what we have gathered for the past few years, Latif, next slide. Um, okay, 71,000 uh, in 2027 and uh, after COVID, we hit about 80,000 uh, vehicles a day and 2022, uh, the real numbers audited uh, is about 85,000 vehicles per day flowing the, the, the highway. So there's a growth about 5.3% and if you look at forward-looking KEGA, it's only about 2.9 that we projected from 2022 up to 2062. Okay, next slide. Again, mix, uh, 94% are cars, and we do have about 5% heavy vehicles coming in all the way from Poklang, uh, going to the Federal Highway and KL, vice versa. Federal Highway uh, going to uh, LKSA, crossing into Kesas, and we go to Poklang. Uh, this is also development, uh, as, I, as, as I feel. There's a lot of commercial properties coming up, and also industrial, within the corridor of uh, LKSA. Slide Okay, the last highway that we have is the first highway that we constructed in 1975 uh, is uh, Akle, Ampang Koronpo Elevated Expressway. So those who live in, in Ampang area, this is actually a blessing for them because this highway is uh, it's only one toll plaza and has five interchanges and 
main line is about 7.4 kilometer. And not more, not much development at this corridor. It's already packed. As you can see, it serves the area of uh, Ampang, uh, UK UK Heights, uh, Liberty Arc, and then it also serves uh, the Ampang area itself, Jalan Ampang, and also that Datuk Kramah. And last but not least, it's also connected to Jalan Tun Razak, Jalan Sultan Ismail, and Kampu Baru. And if you drive your car all the way from Suka, which also belongs to us, it's connected into Akne. Uh, then you can park your car in KLCC. But of course, you have to pay toll. Lah. You, you have to pay five tolls for you to park at KLCC. But, you know, again, it's money for us. Uh, the next slide, you will see uh, the trend. Okay, next. Okay. The trend had showed a dipping from 26, 7, 17 all the way to 19. Okay, why it did was because at that point of time, there were construction of Suka on the MR2 and also uh, SPE on Jalan Jelate. So people got fed up because the, the, the entrance of the highway is now blocked as uh, construction was uh, going on there. But in the year 2022, once we completed Suka, we saw traffic coming in all the way from, I think, as far as, uh, as Cheras. Uh, contributing about 2,000 vehicles a day into Akle. So we see a strong rebound here, not only from Suka, and, but also the newly opened SPE highway had also spurred uh, a lot of traffic uh, into Akle. So I think at the moment, we are doing about 42, 43, and at good days, we can do about 50,000 vehicles a day, especially on, on, on the working day, which is on Monday to Friday. Again, the KEGA here, we are projecting about 2.5% from the year 2022 up to the year 2037. Okay, next one, okay. Again, Akleh is 98% uh, cars, huh? because this is serving all those urban uh, KL people working working in, in KL, uh, daily com com commuters. Okay. So collectively, when you see pre-COVID, we were doing 419, 417, and 427. Uh, then uh, today, in the year 20, then there was a date of course COVID, and today we are doing about uh, four, five, eight uh, in terms of our our uh, numbers that we had in 23. Uh, Latif will then later help uh, present on the forecast 2024. So that will give you a flare of what the, the ADT is in 2024. Okay. Okay, I'll pass operation and maintenance to, to Jasmine. Okay. Thank you. Um, hi, everyone. Okay, basically uh, under um, highway operation, there are four main costs of operation. Uh, the functions. Firstly, is the toll operation. Uh, basically, toll operation is where we manage all toll revenue at lanes. So, is, that is where we have to ensure that our accuracy of system are in place. And of course, uh, since now we are still ha having barriers, so the barriers has to be always done before the transaction. So, upon transaction, the barrier will go up. I'm not talking about MLF, that we will talk about MLF later. I mean, there are questions on that. And we also deal with the uh, back-end uh, payment system with Touch and Go. So the front-end system is be belongs to Prolintas, uh, while the back-end is managed by Touch and Go. And all the information about the traffic data will be shared between Touch and Go. Uh, we have our, our own data Excel, and we have also shared this information to the government. So on in all, all this information are equal to each other. So there should not be any discrepancies. And uh, reconciliation is being done almost every shift to make sure that data in and out are the same. And we are currently we are managing for four highways. We are managing about 10, 10 uh, toll plaza with uh, around 170 poor lanes. Okay, on civil infrastructure, uh, these are the, 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 the most asset that we have to maintain, especially the bridges and roads. And uh, Partly uh, the maintenance that cover uh, grass cutting, uh, drainage system. These are all the part and parcel of the highway uh, functionality. And like Chet Mali said, uh, when there are more heavy vehicles coming in, there will be a check uh, where we will do, uh, they call it pavement condition assessment. There's a, a test that we have to do. Uh, regularly to ensure that we will see the, con the, the condition of our structural uh, stability. And of course, um, all this, uh, we have uh, routine maintenance, we have preventive maintenance, and also we have our uh, corrective maintenance. On the third function is uh, electrical electronics. So basically, our two systems are all electronic uh, automatic system. And we have uh, data uh, like servers. All those things are being maintained by our electrical system. Uh, 
and we also have our street lighting. We have gen sets. All this has to be make uh, be function, and we also have backups. For example, that uh, the Toh Plaza runs twenty four hours. So any power failures, we have our uh, inter interruptible uh, power supply, and also connected to our gen set. It will automatically take over. It means that at no time the, the power failure will have uh, some uh, break off. So there will be no breakup in between. Last, uh, lastly, if we have a traffic safety. Traffic safety that we have our patrol team patrolling our highway 24 hours. So these are the team that will monitor and will report to our uh, uh, communication center what is happening on the highway. Is uh, When there is an incident, there must be a, 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 a assistance provided to our uh, motorists. And they also do some analysis in terms of uh, black spot, accident numbers, uh, accident data, all this information are being analyzed and to see that and to be to ensure that our highway are safe. Um, last and but not least, our support uh, service, uh, these are the team that will do uh, uh, a lot of like uh, administrative things, inspections, the engineers to do inspections. And then um, we have our arrest and service areas. So we manage the store. So all these things that uh, come and part and parcel of our highway operation. Next. So like I said, these are the information, uh, the, the, the work that we do. We have a routine maintenance, preventive maintenance and corrective maintenance. It applies for both uh, electrical and um, uh, electronic system as well as the civil and structure. Okay, next. Um, we also invest in uh, artificial uh, system, we call it Aisha, and also smart surveillance system. So this system is being mounted in our Peronda or the patrolling team vehicles, which will capture, firstly, is, the, is there any potholes? So they will capture any breakdowns, they will capture, um, what we call it, um, uh, foreign objects on the highway. So these are most important that the, the information being relayed back to our back end and our people will get the information firsthand and we will get it, uh, I mean, attended immediately. For example, like uh, portholes, we have to make sure that we, we patch it within 24 hours, but we measure the time. 24 hours is the time limit, but the, the, the fastest is the better because we do we, we try to avoid any motorcyclists ran over the uh, potholes. And of course, system uh, some system we are using is a prime system where all this documentation uh, we try to do on a paperless uh, approach. And we have digital asset mobile apps where every user who are on highway, they can opt for this system where in case of any breakdown they suffered, they can just click and we automatically know where they are. They, they don't have to go to the emergency telephone or call us. We will actually uh, know where they are and we can dispatch our patrolling team to uh, give an assistance. Next. Uh, these are things that we are doing uh, along the, I mean, every yeah. year in, in and out day, <laughs> when cleaning of the main line, we repair uh, bridge joints, uh, bridge joint is very important because we, we want to make sure that our structure are, in, uh, are stabilized. Uh, pavement repair, these are the things that we do in and out every year. Uh, lane marking also, lane marking every year, we, we have to make sure that the visibility is there to prevent any uh, uh, um, in accident. Uh, repenting of signboard uh, uh, post. Um, we, uh, this is an additional thing that we go to have uh, some aesthetic view on our highway. Cutting of trees is very important during uh, rainy season or windy, windy, windy period because we don't want uh, trees to fall down on our roads. And uh, cleaning of all this unwanted vegetation is very important. It looks simple, small thing, but we don't want moisture to actually enter into our structure because we have still uh, reinforcement inside. So these are the things that we do day, uh, in and out every day to, throughout the year. Next. Okay, Teacher Malik, this is about the growth prospect. Okay. So while we look into the uh, urban highway industry in Kuala Lumpur, the growth uh, expected in terms of the KGA is about 4.9% from the year 2023 up to the year 2027. But our projections, as I discussed earlier to you, is between 2 to 3.5%. Uh. 
Uh, our market share for the four highways that we have is about 15.7%. Uh, again, in terms of revenue, uh, we are contributing about 15% in terms of revenue. Key growth drivers for the industry is actually the population growth uh, in the Klang Valley. Now we are having a population of about 7 million. In our projection, we project it to grow about 1.2%. And rising car ownership, we projected it to be about 1.8%. And another key assumption that we used was the uh, median income growth. So a, a, as far as uh, we are, uh, I mean, our assumptions are concerned, we also look at the, uh, the level of uh, growth in terms of the income the increment every year, the bonuses that we expect, uh, that also factored into our, our growth uh, in uh, forecast in our highways. Of course, a limitation of public transport, uh, that is where there is no end-to-end uh, end -end in terms of uh, connectivity of LRT to MRT. And, and of course, uh, this will then create a, a usage of people for forecast. Also, we, we do see a bounce uh, in terms of the traffic. Uh, in, in, in the year 2022, coming I mean 2023, because uh, connectivity of new highways are, are important in this business. Uh, the highway like Sukha contributes into Akleh and vice versa, Akleh contributes, contributes into Sukha. Duke SPE uh, from um, uh, Wangsa Maju all the way to Bangsa help also traffic to contribute into Akleh and vice versa, we complement each other. Previously, uh, when the industry was new, it was a challenge when we see other highways open. Now, when there's a linkage of every highway, uh, we see that the traffic has been moving quite smoothly and, and people like us wouldn't know which highway you're paying for in terms of the toll and you only want to get there fast so that you reduce your time on the road, you save your, your fuel consumption, thus also uh, help uh, your, 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 your shorter time will also give you a less stress on the road Thus, giving you more quality time. So during the operate uh, highways we are now operated is Dash, Sukha, and SPE. These are the highways that we signed concession agreement in the year 2016. Highways that are still under construction, as you know, West Coast Highway is one of them, which is opening for uh, during Raya, and one left uh, is a uh, EKVE, which connects into our third highway in the area of Sungai Sungai Long. Okay. okay. Okay, we've have, we have discussed this in more detail. Okay, the, the two highways that we have, uh, Sukha and Dash, we do have the first right of refusal uh, for the purpose of injection into the trust. Since these highways are, are fairly new, we, we do see they will take some time before we can decide on, on the point of acquisition. Normally, a highway matures between a period of 10 to 15 years. Uh, that, that is where we will see, firstly, uh, there must be a, a steady tra traffic growth on these two highways before we can inject. It has to have a positive or, or strong EBITDA. And number three, it must be able to, to actually uh, repay its debt and leave some balance for us to declare the dividend uh, before we can even consider Dash or Sukha to be injected into the trust. But uh, of course, in, in a business, we also must look into highways, whether in, uh, in uh, Malaysia, or also in Asia countries. Uh, but uh, looking into a highway in, in, uh, in overseas, we do have to take certain kind of uh, further risk in respect of the country uh, and, and also the time for us to inject into the trust. Okay, okay thank you, Shamale. So, yeah, uh, good evening, everyone. Assalamualaikum. Okay, in terms of the, uh, the, if you can see the top diagram, you can observe that historically, Total revenue consists of government compensation, ranging from 20% to 40% due to the government not increasing the toll rates as per the schedule rates. As part of the toll restructuring exercise, which uh, we have uh, previously discussed, from the year to 2023 onwards, you will notice that there is no more government compensation. Instead, in exchange, the government has extended the concession period ranging from 8, eight to 26 years. In the bottom diagram, uh, you can see that soap is the highest contributor in terms of the toll collection at about 45%, followed by Gatri at 30%, Laksa at 50%, and Akle at 10%. This distribution reflects the number of toll plaza on the respective highways. For year 2024 uh, forecast, you can see that for the highway business, typical uh, revenue consists of the toll collection revenue is about 98%, and the remaining is the from the non-toll revenue. 
the non tax revenue includes the revenue sharing uh, to the advertising billboards and also telco towers. For the year 2024, we have forecasted the ADT uh, about 474,000, representing about 3% growth from the year 2023. And the other big ticket items, you can see that, for example, the amortization of HDE of 47 million. So this uh, is based on the uh, based on the highway demand expenditure, which is calculated based on the traffic volume method. For the other operating expenses of 80 million, this one was projected based on 3.5% inflation rate based on the historical uh, actual expenses. So if you can see that for the provision for replacement costs and also the provision for road and pavement resurfacing costs, so this is in tandem with the IC12 of which uh, for the re provision for replacement costs, uh, we have to provide for every five years. And for the pro provision for pavement resurfacing, we have to provide for every seven years. The listing expenses is one of uh, one of item for the year 2024. Okay. And for the year 24, we are uh, focused about the operating profit of 162 million. In terms of the financing costs, uh, this is based on the effective profit rate of 5.4%. And uh, for profit for the year, for year 24 is 8.3 million. So the beauty of business trust is that even though you, you have the profit for the year is 8 million, if you can see the next slide, in terms of the distribution to uh, unit holders, we can declare the dividends out of the cash flow of 70 million. So how we derive these 70 million? First, we have to reconcile between the profit before tax of 20 to 23 million. Then we have to adjust it for any non-cash item. For example, we have to add up the amortization of HDE, 47 million. Uh, then we have to add the uh, unwanted discount, this is non-cash item, about 11 million. Then we have to minus the income tax paid, 30 million. Then uh, we have to minus the capex for the uh, land widening and also uh, DCE star heli interchange of 10 million. Then the listing expenses I mentioned earlier on, this is the one of uh, expenses. So for the year 2024, the disabled income is 68 million. And then uh, we are going to utilize the existing cash balance of uh, 1 million. So based on the 70 million uh, distribution for the year 2024, uh, assuming the uh, IPO price of 95 cent, we are looking at the dividend yield of 6.7%. So in terms of the distributions, we since the listing in uh, March 2024, so the first interim dividend will be paid in October 2024, and the remaining balance will be paid some way in the first quarter to all 35. Okay, so I'll pass over to Chia Azmi for the ESG section. Okay, so I think it has been, okay. Basically, uh, in, in our group, uh, we have uh, run our voluntary ESG report from the year 2021 up to the year 2022. So this initiative were taken voluntary for us to actually prepare for our listing exercise in the year 2023 and 2024. Next slide, I think. So some of the initiatives that we have done, we have promoted the sun lighting, uh, mainly for silk, acrylic, and uh, XSA. And we have managed to reduce our energy bill between uh, 30 to, to, to 50%. And uh, we do have uh, another stretch that we need to prepare for the uh, silk uh, or Gatri highway in, uh, in the year 2024 and 2025. So by changing SON to SON uh, to LED, uh, we managed to save in terms of uh, ringgit amount close to about two to three million uh, before, and now we have uh, we are doing about uh, saving about thirty to fifty percent. Uh, in terms of uh, other sustainable uh, management, we have uh, done rainwater harvesting. Uh, we've also put uh, solar roofing on our all our super machine building in Gatri and also LKSA, and uh, we are now working for uh, rooftop uh, and also our tour plaza in oh, Surk, really? yeah, and uh, Surk Highway, and also some in Katri. Another uh, test that we are doing now is we are, we are, we are trying to manage uh, a new uh, technology, which is called MacRebba, which uh, for the purpose of pavement. The mm -hmm. life of a pavement on the highway now is about seven years, uh, me, eh? yep. but uh, 
if we test this and it works well, we can extend the life of the pavement to while also into 10 years and while also promoting the ESG initiat initiatives. Okay. Uh, we have also upgraded our rest area uh, in Gatri. So you live along the area of uh, Bukit Jilutong. Uh, recommend you to visit the rest area where we have increased the letable area and we have also recycled 30% of the, the materials. Uh, your left is where it was before. And, and today is actually uh, on your right, uh, very beautiful. And, and we have also won the uh, cleanest uh, rest area in the Selangor area. And I think uh, we were also certified to be one of the cleanest toilet uh, by the MBSA in the year 2023. Of course, now what we've got to do is we have to maintain it and, and make sure it is always in good order. Uh, moving forward, uh, we are also upgrading our Lagong Lebais and also our Lebai in Silk, which will complete in the year 2025, uh, starting in 2024. So we have also done an uh, uh, event space in uh, Shah Alam called Shah Alam Urban Park. Of course, it generates income for our sister company, Pointash uh, Highway Services in Bahad, but uh, it also generates a lot of revenue uh, in terms of traffic moving in and out of uh, KSA. Uh, the reason why we did it was uh, because there were no event space for, 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 the, uh, for the community in Shah Alam. So now there's weddings almost every week. Uh, it also launches products, etc. And collectively, uh, a week, you can see about 2,000 to 3,000 cars coming in and out for the event space uh, in LKSA, Alam Impian, Tour Bazaar. Okay, of course, uh, another thing is we steadfast in uh, preparing quality and uh, and also standards. We have all the standards. Uh, the, the thing that we did first was we have the ABMS system, uh, ISO 37000, which we got it in 2016. Very new at that point of time, but, but we got it in. And of course, uh, OSHA and traffic safety management system. Last but not least, uh, I think yeah, we also have all these policies uh, in place on, on your right. Yeah, uh, we, we uh, also have, uh, yeah, I think the policies are in place. The next one are some key takeaway. Um, of course, uh, again, we, we have a division policy to declare 90% of our distributable income and not profit. So there's a difference between a trust and a company. And we are projected to declare a dividend of 70 million in the year 2024. Uh, we serve nearly half a million users and uh, in, the, the investor has a, 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 a point or has an opportunity to invest into high barrier entry highways, which is regulated by the government and also a uh, long concession period. We are proven industry experts uh, that we manage six highways now and we do have a solid growth plan coming in, in the future. So I think that's, uh, that's about our slide. Uh, maybe we can, uh, if there's any questions, we can take it. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Anshak Malin, Anshak Azimi, and Anshak Latif for your presentation. Okay. Are you ready for the Q&A section? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Some of the questions I have answered. Yeah. Yeah, I saw it. Thank, thank you, Anshak Azim, for the help. It is in the Q&A. Yeah, Latif. Okay. How do I see it, is it? Uh, you just need to click the one that yang ada show red. Uh, ni. There's now seven questions. Uh, I've answered. Oh, Q&A. Okay. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Okay. The... Okay. I think uh, will other new highways be injected into the BT? Yeah, I think. In the have... future. In the future, yes. Latif, I think we have discussed earlier about it. Yeah. We, we do have Sukkot and Dash. But it depends on how, how fast it can mature to be injected. And of course, as a company, we are definitely looking at highways within the Kelang Valley and also um, probably in uh, in the Asia country uh, moving forward. Okay, number two, may I know under financial 1.5% native, what is this? Yeah, no. so basically the other revenue, yeah, so it's a consi consists of the uh, advertising billboards, spare rental for telco towers and also rental uh, store operators in RSA. So it's uh, make up the 1.5% for the other revenue. Yeah, these are the non toll revenue that revenue. we have uh, sharing with Pointas Highway Shared Services. Yep. We do have a service level agreement with them and there's a certain revenue that, that we share but cost to manage uh, the staff is coming in from, from, from them. Okay, will Pointas be inventing any green? Yeah, I think uh, we are embarking more on solar panels along the highway. Yeah, good idea. R&R, &R, we are also going to 
to uh, have some solar panels on it. And our latest day by, uh, once we start to construct in Lagong, and also SERP will promote green energy. Hmm. Do we need to type the answers or is it answered? Yeah, it's, it has been answered. Oh, okay. Thank you. And just now you mentioned about the 70 million for the financial year forecast of 2024. Is PPT or PIT? The dividend is based... Dividend, is it? Uh, the 70 million? Yeah, this will build policy 70 million. Okay. Let's take, go back to the slide. The distributable income slide. Yeah, the key takeaway. Yeah, we will show you. Okay. This is key takeaway, right? Wait, uh, okay, so what we do is we reconcile PBT to arrive to the distributable income. Okay, so our distributable income, although the profit is only 8 million after tax, we will distribute uh, 70 million ringgit in the year 2020. We will declare 70 million and payment is twice October yeah. 2024 and March 25. Is it? Yeah. So that means in a normal IPO, uh, since the PAT is only a million, so we can only uh, declare dividend of a million. But because of this business trust, so we can declare out of the cash flow. So we have to reconcile from our PNL to the cash flow. So that, that means we can uh, declare 70 millions from our uh, existing cash cash flow. I mean, yeah. Okay. Okay. Understand. Okay. And what is the point industry on the implementation? Oh, yeah, okay, just now, uh, Anchan, uh, I think already answered about it. Okay, uh, the question was, uh, the first question on MLF was about uh, when it's going to be implemented. Yeah. This question is whether oh, it's better it going to by be government by the government or, or by, yourself. by ourselves. Okay, yeah. this is a very tricky question. Uh, in fact, we are actually uh, working out or actually the best, the best what I would say here, don't, don't quote me, is uh, we are actually arguing with the government. It would be best to be undertaken by individual concessionaires instead of by the government. Uh, of course, they are pro and cons. At the end of the day, it's all about the commercial terms. Yeah, I think there are four things that we need to engage before we decide whether they, we are doing on our own or we need to go to YTL. As you know, now Bajaya also is coming in. Mm. The first thing is the government and the, the parties are uh, discussing with us has not come up with a proper technical spec yet yep. in terms of the system. Okay. Number two, they have not discussed with us on the business model that is required. And number three, we have not even discussed on the commercial terms. So yep. once these three is sorted out, then we will know the direction of where we are actually yeah. going. Right. Right. So, so that's in a nutshell, of course, we are talking to them, but uh, nothing is moving so, so far. Okay, in terms of the dividend policy of 90%, unlike rate, so uh, for rate, they have like uh, the dividend policy so that they can get some the tax incentive. But for the business trust, uh, the 90% is our self imposed policy. Uh, yeah. Okay. okay. Because it's, it's one, business yeah. trust. Yes, because it's business trust. Business trust is not governed by companies act. Is governed by the TAS Act, of which is uh, approved by the SC. So it's just like how ASB is managed by ASMB, right? The funds are managed by some somebody. It's the same concept here. There is one question from Mark, uh, which says, will the trust still generate income mm. once full concession ends? Okay. In, in the spirit of the concession agreement, once uh, concession mm -hmm. ends, we have to return the highways to, to the government. Uh, that means three highways will be returned in the year 2062. And uh, uh, one highway are claimed to be written in the year 2037. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, other highways we have answered. Just now, I, yeah, just now you mentioned about the side income. Will mm. they still have another side income from it? Like maybe you got event. Yeah. So the, the side income in nature fact is uh, essentially now we do have uh, the event space which we share the income, telco towers, uh, fiber cable that we lay within the corridor of the highway and also billboard, right? It, when we build the petrol station, the land belongs to the concessionaire but it has a long-term disagreement with our sister company. All arm's length uh, reviewed so there, there is some recurring income in respect of uh, leasing of land. 
but collectively it will only be about 2 to 3% compared to the total revenue that we have mm. so so besides two revenue of course there's also investment in uh, sharia compliance uh, fds and all that lah that will generate income of about 10 to 12 million in the year 2024. Okay, 2%, 1.5 to 2%. Just yeah. now I also saw it, you also upgrading our straight line, right? Will there be a cost for the group? Uh, upgrading of, sorry? The straight line. Straight lights, okay. Yeah. What we're doing now is we are going on a zero capex kind of uh, investment. So we're talking to companies that are willing to come in and do their capex on their own and we will share the, the, the saving. Other than we spending on our own money, we are getting third party to come in and, and do for us. So collectively, there's no cash cash uh, outflow. So assuming the saving <coughs> is, is, is uh, 50%, right? They might take 30, we will take 20%. So no cash outflow on capex on, on solar. Mm, yeah. Okay. Yes, Jitam. Also, someone asking for the solar. Is this helping like save how many costs for it, the energy okay. costs? Okay, in natural cost is saving is between 30 to 50 percent. Once okay, we so but but this consists of solar and also changing of LED from sun. Okay. Mm. Yes, there are two stages. The first stage is to change the uh, the normal lights into the LED lights. That will bring the, the saving by about 20 to 25 percent. But once we got the solar thing up, uh, then we have another saving of 10 to 20%. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And then also, will there be any special tolerate for the upcoming higher Raya Festival like uh, offered during Chinese New Year? Okay. The government might give a discount for for, for or maybe free, yeah, ask me, yeah. Yeah. But then but then in the possession of the agreement, whenever the government asks you to reduce or give free, we will be compensated. Because there's a for formula yeah. that allows us to claim back from the government. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, in okay. fact, uh, in fact, for 2022, uh, Hari Raya uh, toll free has been mm -hmm. paid. Mm -hmm. uh, outstanding is 2023. All the festival uh, uh, toll, toll discount, uh, we are actually compiling. Uh, we are going to do an auditing. So once we got all the figure audited, we will pass it to the government for next process. For compensation payment. Okay, then we just wait for it for the high ride are coming. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. How do you forecast for the traffic volume? So okay. basically the traffic okay. volume forecasted by we have the tra independent traffic consultant. Mm -hmm. Uh so we have Perundin traffic classics in the Bahad. So yeah, this is our independent traffic consultants. Lah. So uh, in terms of the group, we have a forecaster of the KEGA between 2.5% 2 to 3% for the combined all the four highways. Again, the key assumption that they use to generate the traffic forecast is the GDP, mm -hmm. the, the, the population growth, uh, the development growth within the corridor, and also the uh, motor vehicle sales within the corridor area, I mean in mm -hmm. KL area. So that is one of the key assumptions. Of course, taking into account the inflation rate and also medium income. And also, what is the high income uh, rate uh, during the uh, preparation of the forecast? Okay. The, the, the traffic trend during festival, I would say that uh, during festival, when the, the day before the festival comes, uh, we as we are usually we as, uh, we expect high traffic, and uh, during high raya, example during high raya itself, traffic will be low. But after high raya, for most a month, there the traffic will be on the rise. Because uh, Hari Raya is one month, people travel within the city to visit friends and relatives within a month, they celebrate Hari Raya for a year. Uh, for, sorry, for a month. <laughs> a month, yeah. Uh, a year pula, sorry. <laughs> for a month. No lah, Hari Raya happy man. <laughs> uh, everybody happy Raya ma. Happy Raya. So, so, so I think I think during uh, during the time of festive, right, uh, yeah. you will see a surge in traffic in Kelang Valley. During the fasting month, during the raya, yeah. of course, uh, during raya they will be for the for, for the kampung, right? When they come yeah. back, right? And uh, then you see a search. Yeah. Oh. That just depends the trend. Okay, okay. And then you know like, raya open house is one month, right? Sure, people mm. go makan here and there. So traffic go up. Ah. Mm. Oh, yeah. Okay. Then is there any like emergency land that we can use, like mm. newspaper management? Uh, as me, emergency land as me. Emergency lane, yes. Uh, we don't anticipate that on our highway, but uh, I know that a Plus is, is, is facing that sort of problem where they don't have that enough capacity to cater uh, search of traffic. 
Thus far, we have not actually uh, go on smart lane. We go for our smart lane uh, during weekdays uh, at uh, Sikh Highway, where we use emergency lane uh, approved by the police and the, the authority uh, to disperse traffic. That is the only location that we are doing smart lane. Other than that, we don't. Okay, and then to, 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 to ease congestion in the morning, right? We yeah, do have contra flow. Yeah. We do contra flow in uh, Akle from Ampang to KL Bang. Uh, we also do uh, in uh, FKSA from uh, Kota Kemuning to Shalam. And we also do it in South High Highway. So mm -hmm. that will ease the traffic congestion uh, in, in the morning. Mm -hmm. okay. The morning. And is it will be also in the evening? Uh, no, no, no. After working out, yeah. no, except, no, for six, uh, except for except for six, yeah, except for so, yes, the rest no, there's no. Mm. All right, okay. When it comes to if really compensation, how do you plan to capture the value in order to receive the compensation? Okay, in order to get say 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 in the next ten years, okay. For example, yeah. we are supposed to increase toll for Gatri, Laksa, and Sir, right? And government say do not increase toll. So in the in the concession agreement, there is a gazetted rate that we need to follow, and also the rate in the concession agreement. The difference between the two, the government has to compensate. But how do they compensate? Right, that's the question. We need to go through an audit process. We need to submit the number to the Maga Luguraya. We get in our independent auditor to audit the number, which is uh, most probably uh, one of the, the the big four that we have. Last year was uh, Ernst Yang. So once Ernst and Yang has audited the number, it goes back to the government, uh, the Maga Laboraya, where there is a joint certification between the partner of EY, the firm, the ke, uh, Ketua Pengarah, the Maga Laboraya, and also the uh, CEO of Printas. Once that certificate is signed, it's sent to Kementerian Kerja Raya for them to request funds from Ministry of Finance. When the funds come in from MOF to KKR, we will be paid within a week. The whole process uh, of this compensation I think we are the fastest, lah. although it's 365 <laughs> days. But so far, I think we never stopped to chase them to get our money back. Lah. So that's why you see, uh, I was expecting 40 million of my compensation to be coming in the year 2024. But we got it in December because we chased them like, like crazy. crazy lah. Only one outstanding now. I think Azmi also cannot stick for the one. But among the concession companies, I think we are the fastest to actually get paid. Lah. So in, 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 in the sense that once traffic uh, toll rate go up, we expect the revenue to go up because compensation plays an important role, right? Mm. But yeah. it's protected in the concession agreement. Yeah. The, the, the compensation, uh, we, we, we ask for cash, nothing cash. else. Nothing cash else. Compensation. Yeah. Mm. All right. And there, if, uh, that, yeah. yeah, there's a question about this any chance of concession extension in lieu of highway expansion? And uh, it's the same question beneath it. Uh, mm. Does company have intention? I think we don't, okay, we only do whatever has been uh, mm. provided under the concession agreement. Mm. Uh, we only do things is under ob our obligation. Okay, for, for future expansion, if there is a need by the government, uh, which is outside the concession agreement uh, obligation, we will ask the government to fund. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, we are not going to spend our own money, no, no way. So we are only doing whatever is our obligation, which yeah. is now the uh, third lane widening we have to budget it for. Yeah. Yeah. And we are also doing the strut heli interchange. I think like what Injia has been said, the traffic, if I mean the last question by Mr. Kao Lim Shi, right? That's the yeah, company. Spent the heli uh, yeah, I, I don't think we will expect four to six lane in the future, no way. Because first thing, there's no requirement right, to, to, to expand. Uh, in terms of uh, lane widening, Anything that has to be done has to have must have land acquisition, and that must come in from the government. Okay. Must process before the, I mean, I must process before you do the government. Yeah, to get the like what, what's happening in plus, uh, in the southern part, uh, there is no, it's not plus obligation. So the government actually has actually allocated nine hundred million for plus to expand the road for twenty kilometers. Right. Hmm. In Johor, okay. yeah. Yeah, in in Serdang to Kulai. Okay. Like now, the government discuss for the petrol price subsidy. If in the future increase the petrol price, will affect the highway usage? Okay, I think that's a good question. Um, in the sense that when we we ran our numbers, we do have a, a, a sensitivity analysis done 
and we ran three cases. One is a low case, the base case, and a high, high case. I do feel there will be some impact once there is a fuel subsidy removed. Um, but if you, you're talking about 100% removed, then the fuel price will be three ringgit. Lah. But then at that point of time, the public transport must be super good. Lah. But if the public, public transport is still not good, people will still drive. Okay, that is my, my take on, on, the, the, on the industry in respect of uh, fuel subsidy being removed. But at the worst case scenario, say it happens, uh, then, then for, for us, okay, we have a cash balance close to about 400 million ringgit now, which we can still afford to actually maintain our highway and to pay, to, to pay the dividend that, that we need to actually pay. Uh. But of course, at the 10th year, when you have a toll high, revenue will jump about 20 to 30%. We hope uh, there is a balance between fuel subsidy and no subsidy at all. Of course, that is something that we got to negotiate with the government. Mm. Okay. Anyway, people also need to use a high bank. Yeah. Okay. I, 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 I think um, lately after COVID, people use highway more I think, because now mm. our traffic volume is quite, quite, quite good. Yeah. Everyone is back to normal, to Not work, good. to holiday. Um, I think it's a Malaysian behavior. We prefer to drive our own. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Quite convenient if they have car. And yeah. just now you mentioned also public transport, like after the mm. MRT complete, how is it yeah. affect to the skill highway, for example? Okay, you see, uh, we have four highways, right? Yeah. Akle doesn't have MRT. You only got the LRT, but the LRT was came in 1995. So no no impact on like Akle, yeah? For one. Gatri Corridor is in a corridor which is uh, considered as MRR3, like Middle Ring Road 3, outer, where there is uh, only uh, roads coming in from Rawang to Shah Sha Sha Alam. So we don't expect MRT to come there. Uh, talking about the third highway, LKSA phone uh, is, is, is right smack in, in Shah Alam. No lines of MRT going there. But when we do MRT lines or LRT lines, it goes on the federal highway all the way to Klang. Right? Okay. Last highway that we have was Sir. Sir Highway, uh, in 2017, when we acquired, the MRT line opened from Sungai Buloh to uh, Kajang. Uh, then we saw a traffic drop a bit by about 2,000 uh, traffic per, per day. Why did it drop? Because people were trying to use uh, MRT. Uh, at that point of time, it dropped. So we were quite worried. We were tracking the traffic uh, every day. But there came a point where, where people thought, okay, it's more convenient to actually drive than taking the, the MRT. Lah. Even today, MRT connect all the way to my office in PNB, right? I don't see, okay, lah, I don't see drop in traffic in Kajang Sud. Lah. I tried to take MRT from uh, from my office. I think we let it when she asked me all the way to Putrajaya to see whether I can go to MOF fast. But when I arrive in Putrajaya, right, I still need to take a grab to, to arrive in, in uh, MOF office. It's not linked, right? So far, uh, the four highways that we have, I think the risk of MRT, if there is any, has been factored into our forecast. But uh, for me, I, I feel we have tested two or three uh, and, and there's no risk of LRT or MRT like, taking our business out. Anyway, if the connect is better and be better, then people no need to get right and then they kill and get the public transport. Right. Yeah. Right. But right. anyway, like you say, you need to go office to put your jaya, but at the end, you still need to grab maybe 10 minutes or 5 minutes yeah. to your office. And I still need to pay a grab. You cannot, you cannot, it's not free. <laughs> okay, maybe we have to feed back to our <laughs> Okay, and okay. the last is like uh, about ESG. Will Paul Indus plan to contract an animal highway like similar to the overseas countries? Uh, me animal crossing me. Animal, we don't, we don't, we, we don't. don't, we don't. Yes, okay. I know that uh, in Australia you, they constructed mm. uh, uh, culverts for animal crossing, and there are areas where they put up uh, ropes for monkey to cross. Mm. So we, we don't have actually. Kita ada kita ada monjek ke Gatri ya? Ah, tak ada. Ah, uh, dekat tak, tak ada. Dah Gatri tak ada. Very very yeah. unlikely lah. Eh, uh, yeah. uh, tapi But, kucing hutan ada. Oh, kucing very hutan. rare lah. Kucing hutan very rare. Oh. Okay, I think we almost answer all of the question. Okay. Right. They have bus shuttle of the Abadi to main concession area. They have yeah. bus. Eh, uh, people want to do bus. Would there be some? They have bus shuttle. Yeah, I know. They have bus shuttle to MRT to LT area. To make that will be some some other factor. Okay, fine. I, I think you're 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 right. There are shuttles, 
But uh, looking at the demographic of our country, right? Okay, now we are having 42 degrees every day. I was in Langawi, I was burnt because I was playing golf. But uh, the country itself where people feel that connectivity is something that needs to be done. But uh, some areas, yes, you have bus, bus shuttle. But when you arrive at the MRT station to go to your next point, I don't think there's a shuttle service also. Lah. I mean, if 100% shuttle service, fine. But at the moment, there, there is none it's, yet. It's point to point. Point to point. point, to point yeah. Yeah. And people like to sit in one, their own car uh, so that they can get the luxury of the aircon and also listen to the music when they come to work. Lah. Mr. C.T. Lim asked, any chance of motorbike being charged? I really love for motorbike to be charged. <laughs> I've been fighting with Mr. Azmi every day. At least charge 50 cents. But again, between whatever we discussed today, I don't think there's a political will mm-hmm. that will allow us to, to charge. Right, yeah. I wish he, he can. Yeah. yeah, of course. Those days, yes. Those days, we charge 50 cents, but it was removed. I don't mean. Ada dulu masa kat plus 50 cents kita charge. Even dekat Cosway plus pun dia charge tak. But now, all taken out. Oh. No more charge for motorcycle. Okay. Will there be dividend yearly by year? Okay. Um, yearly or by year? I think, I think we're still thinking, because in our forecast, we projected yearly dividend, right? Of course, uh, while we go through the process of this thing, we will definitely review our policy, whether we can pay biannually or, or even by, by quarterly. Uh, that is something that we have to consider after this thing. Yeah. Okay, then we just wait for it after the listing and that's it for the yep. dividend policy. Correct. Okay, I think we answered almost all of the question. And then, yeah, any closing remark before we end for this? Well, well I think uh, this is something uh, new in the market where you have the first uh, infra business trust coming into into the Bursa Malaysia. We're very excited because... Uh, we tried to, to list by a normal way and suddenly we found that the BT is something that we can move forward with. So we hope the market will be super excited as us and hope for the best on the 25th of March. Uh, thank you. Maybe last parting word from Encik Azmi? No, uh, um, I don't have any, any anything to, uh, unless you ask me a question on operations. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Everything thank is detailed. Thank you, Encik yeah, Ange- Malim, yeah. Encik Azim and Encik yeah. Nafif. And you. don't forget, um, all in dust in front of BT business okay. trust will be listed on end market on 25th of March. Thank you, thank you so much. Okay, we will just end here. Have a nice day. Thank, thank you. you, bye bye. And congratulations of the listing. Thank okay. you, thank you so much. Bye.